My name is Alfie Lewis, and I was a Soul Train dancer from 1989 to 2006. My family is originally from DeWarty, Morovia, Pasadena, and uh, we moved to South Central LA, and then we moved to Compton and Long Beach. My background, well, my mom said at five years old I uh, had great balance, and she felt that I would be a dancer or a preacher. I grew up in my grandfather's barbershop and was dancing for free haircuts and making money, doing the robot. Growing up in the Prince and Michael era, totally influenced by different artists, Lenny Kravitz, you know, from Diana Ross to Lena Horne, you know, just different people from jazz to, to hip hop. Professionally, I started dancing when I got to high school. I got in a, a song and dance group called The Fellas. I went to Dorsey High, we did pep rallies, we did every rally high school we could do. And we got popular from doing it. I decided that it was a big thing to keep dancing, so I started going out and performing in clubs. At the same time, Soul Train was still on TV every Saturday, and we wanted to, you know, sit down and watch it and catch every outfit, catch every person dancing. Hit the studio, cause I'm paid full. One night at the nightclub, hanging out, Eric Cassine came up to me and said, hey, would you like to dance on Soul Train? That was the moment that changed my whole career. So when I walked on the Soul Train lot, I was in complete awe. I just wanted to be in the atmosphere. I wanted to absorb everything around me and make sure that whatever I did, I was gonna get on stage or I was gonna get down that Soul Train line. Those are two things that I needed to do. I had always dreamed of being on Soul Train, and at that time, dance was strong. Music was strong, hip hop was coming in with this new youth, this new sound, raw and strong. The New Jack Swing at that time was kind of had its moment. The underground hip hop at that time started coming in, which would mean like Tribe Called Quest, Busta Rhyme, you know, Brand Nubians, Public Enemy, that era started to take charge and change the, the course of the music. My best memorable moment on the show is arriving to the stage. I mean, just when Eric was like, Alfie, Al Boogie, to the stage, to the riser. Every time, every time I showed up, you know, I took over Lusky, like, like I took over the elders and tried to keep that same feel and energy going across the stage because they accepted me and I felt good about that. To go down the Soul Train line, first or second, not like always waiting, was a special treat. But it was a big deal to either get on the stage or to go down the Soul Train line. Like I said, I had been dancing since high school. I had a reputation and it was good enough to trust. So when Don asked Eric, who is that guy? He was like, oh, don't you worry about him. That's Al. And you know, I just kind of rolled with that, you know. Anytime they called me, I was there. As I was dancing on Soul Train, I had opportunity to work with a lot of different artists like Yo-Yo, Belle Biv DeVoe, Ray J and Brandy, Will Smith, Mary J. Blige. You could find me on Janet Jackson's That's The Way Love Goes. I'm the guy on the couch. And the list goes on. I mean, I can go from the Loonies to, you know, Snoop Dogg. Soul Train brought me a storm of great, great, uh, Moment. I used to live downtown, 129th Street, Convent. Everything's upbeat. Being on Soul Train helped me a lot because I was able to travel the world, work on some of the biggest stages. I toured with a lot of great people. Soul Train was so helpful to my career, it actually took me to where I'm at now. I'm doing fitness and I'm still traveling. I've worked with Blue Cross, I've taught kids over different countries. It's opened so many doors that I still hold that very special thing in my heart that Soul Train had brought me, that magic.
I was there when, when we moved studios from KTLA, KT11, when we went to Channel 5. The show made a big change when they left the original studio because, you know, I guess everybody felt different about the new studio at Paramount. And it got a little bit stricter. You had to dress the part, you had to know what you were doing, and you didn't have to play around. It was heartbreaking because you could feel the show slowly dying. And then you, you know, you hear rumors and Don's not doing so well because he wants to get rid of the idea, whatever, he wants to sell it off, which was a fine idea if someone's gonna take the show and do something even more great with it. The idea of Soul Train and what it brought to America, that era, man, it just was sad to see it go. It gave everybody that confidence into whoever you thought you were going to be. It helped build that self in you and give you motivation to say, you know what, I can shine like a star and create my own vision. And that's basically what it was. Soul Train created its own vision for the common person to walk off on the street and then become a star, you know, which that was a great thing for, for that door to be open. In the city, ladies look pretty. Guys tell jokes so they can seem witty. Tell a funny joke just to get some play. Then you try to make a move and she says no way. Girls are faking, goodness saking. They want a man who brings home the bacon. Got no money and you got no car, then you got...